Speed dating, how do you like it? Tēnā kotoa no. So I'm going to talk to you about a project that we've been doing on social license to operate. This is a term that's kind of appeared in the New Zealand conversation about the marine environment about 2008, but didn't really start to feature um, more prominently until about 2012, and it's been increasing since then, maybe leveling off a bit since 2016. But we wanted to explore who's using this term, how is it being used, to what effect is it being used, and how might we use it to, to enable communities and industry to work together um, more in a more mutually supportive way to support the blue economy. So the, we had, um, I guess the, the definition of the term in, in a broad sense is the social license represents the acceptance or approval of a company and its operations by its communities. And the, oh, I'm clicking the wrong thing here. Let's try this. There we go. And the basic premise is that a community's operations are at risk if local communities have a low opinion of the company, even if that company holds the necessary legal permits. We've got a paper from team members uh, James Baines and Peter Edwards who looked at the role of uh, relationships in achieving and maintaining a social license in the aquaculture sector in New Zealand. And that was published earlier this year in Aquaculture Magazine uh, Journal. The second stage of our project was to conduct what we call a discourse analysis to examine the, the content, the structure, and the syntax of the messages contained in text where this, where this phrase is being used. And this analysis assumes that language choices are not accidental, but they actually reflect power relationships. So we did an internet search, and out of 2,000 results, we found 99 relevant documents that mention social license to operate in a marine context uh, related to New Zealand. Um, these are not media articles, but actually prepared texts by government, industry, or NGOs. They're published between 1996 and 2017. And for instance, one of the things we did was look at what verbs are used in the different documents. Between some, some verbs, some documents talk about acquiring social license, others improving, maintaining, or diminishing social license. And we were looking at what the implications of that is. Essentially, a couple of, of key points that emerge is that government and industry are, document, are dominating this discourse. And very, very rarely are we seeing NGOs and iwi even being referred to, let alone, um, let alone talking about social license. The term social license suggests that communities have the power to grant or withhold approval of commercial operations, but in fact the, the actual language being used by those talking about social license suggests otherwise. It suggests that it's all about industry and government and not about communities and iwi. And I would encourage you to come down and visit our poster um, to get more details about that analysis. We do have a paper in review written, by, written with Mark Newton and, and Tricia Fairley, which, which um, dissects and, and explore this, explores this in much more detail. And again, that's uh, summarized in the poster downstairs. And finally, we are conducting, we did conduct a survey just a, a couple months ago of community perceptions of aquaculture in New Zealand. And some of the key findings emerging from this survey was that contact quality, or essentially the, the quality of relationships, is very highly significant predictor of acceptance and approval of an industry or a company. Uh, much more so than anything else, just about. But cultural impacts also featured, as did the distribution of benefits, especially when talking about industry as a whole, but less so for a particular company, which we had some separate data on. So we are hoping to explore that a little bit further um, as we analyze the data. One other thing that came through was that recreational fishers had quite different, uh, different perceptions of approval and, and acceptance of industry than other people did. Um, so um, just in, I mean, that is a work in progress and we're just going to be exploring some other questions, exploring differences between responses about industry in general or, or a particular company, 
who is the community that actually grants SLO? What's the relevant community to ask? And how do community and public views actually get formed? How does that work? And if we can understand those things, we can hopefully help industry and communities work better together to, um, whoops, I've gone, um, to build better, better trust and goodwill and uh, more sustainable industries in our communities. Thank you very much.